Hi everyone! I was going to start working on filming three looks, one palette with the new Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity palette, but unfortunately, I am approaching peak season at the cat shelter with adoptions, and I kid you not, I literally am meeting like eight or nine people every week and then sending home cats every week, and so I have just been absolutely slammed, so filming enough looks for my three looks, one palette, and then editing it has just really been out of the question, so I'm gonna have to kind of scale back on what I'm doing until the peak season calms down. This was completely expected, but what was unexpected since I just started my YouTube channel this year was how it would affect my filming schedule, so it's a good lesson to learn. In the future, I plan on building a backlog when the season is low, so that way when I hit peak season I can take a break without having to fall behind on my upload schedule. So with that in mind, I'll just be doing something simple today because I do have an appointment where I have to meet with somebody. So I thought it would be really fun if I maybe did a more kind of thick winged eyeliner look where the eyeliner is actually the point so I have little to no eyeshadow on. So you guys can kind of see how I do a more thicker eyeliner if I want it to really show. I'm using the Tatcha the Liquid Silk Canvas today. It was really cool last week, but now it's really hot and humid again, so we joke around here that there's like the false fall, and then the second summer, and then the real fall, and right now we are in the middle of the second summer, so... I'm gonna use this to kind of help to mattify my skin just a little bit without actually drying my skin out. Normally I just use hydration, 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 but during the humid summer I do have to use something that is more or less just kind of neutral towards my skin, so I go for something that just covers up my pores and doesn't really do much else. As usual, the cats are playing when I'm filming. Perfect timing, so if you hear them in the background, they're just having a lot of fun. I'm going to be using this new Moonshot Micro Setting Fit Cushion EX. The inside looks like this. It is supposedly even better than their Micro Setting Fit Cushion, which I really, really liked. So this is kind of like the renewed version and they're not really selling the old version anymore. I was going to use a new foundation that I got from Suku, but today for convenience and speed's sake, I'm just going to use this cushion foundation and see how it goes. So just one press into the sponge and I got all this product. So all of that was just one layer with just what I put on my face, nothing else extra. I do like how it looks, but you, I can see right between my eyebrows that it clung to some dry patches that I have going on. I also have some dry patches around my eyes, so you can I can see that it's a little bumpy right around here and here. These are places where if a foundation is going to cling to dry patches, it will always be right here. I have not gotten a new eye cream in a while, and it's high time that I do need to buy one. So I do actually plan on picking one up from Sulwasu during the next um, friends and family or VIB Rouge sale, and hopefully that'll fix the problem. But for now, my skin is very dry here, so if there is a foundation that isn't like perfectly glossy, it's gonna cling right here. So the solution to that for me right now is really I just don't powder there. So given how this foundation is really pretty matte and I didn't put down a super hydrating primer, I'm actually going to really just not powder anywhere except for maybe under my eyes today. I'm going to use a different concealer today. I just want to spice things up a little bit. I'll use this concealer from a different Korean brand today. This concealer is okay, it gets the job done. But that JX concealer was just so good, it's really hard for me to like switch back to anything else. What I've really been enjoying lately is I take my flat Clinique brush and I actually will apply it flipped over on the side so I can really be super precise. I really need an under eye cream of some sort. I can't wait to place my order later this week. I got a friends and family code 
from online, so my eyes are just so dry. Like, when your eyes are as dry as mine, anytime anything looks bad, it is just totally your skin. So I can't wait to fix this, especially as the seasons change, because like I kind of was able to slip by in the summer, but now there's no getting away with it. I'm gonna use this MAC Fix Plus. This is the Pony Edition one. Isn't it really pretty? I'm so glad that I was able to get some stuff from her collection. I'm just gonna use this to add some hydration back to my face. My skin definitely is now looking and feeling a lot better. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and powder under my eyes. I'm gonna use this Charlotte Tilbury powder. It's the airbrush one. This is the best for when my skin is dry and I just want to still set my makeup without drying out my eyes. I also did finally get around to washing my makeup brushes, so they all look really clean now. I'm gonna try and start making it like a monthly thing where the first to second day of each month is makeup brush washing. So that way I'm on a schedule, my brushes will always get washed on a regular basis and I'll always be able to have clean brushes because what had happened was I had definitely had a bucket of dirty brushes and it was growing and growing and so the brushes that I could actually use was beginning to rapidly decline and then I was like shoot I really do have to wash my brushes and by then it was like September like 20th or so so I was like what if I just make it first of every month no exception and so I did that and so now everything's clean I'm definitely feeling pretty proud of myself it was a monumentous task so I'm going to kind of just call that done with the powder for now. I'll probably be using like cream products and stuff on my face just kind of to save myself from having to use so much powder. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and move on to my eyebrows. I'm going to use this brow cream in Ebony from M Cosmetics. You've definitely seen me use this a lot. I don't want to go too brow heavy like I do in my other looks where the eye look is so intense you have to really have a structured brow to balance it out, but this time I'm just going out and I am actually seeing people, conducting some appointments, so I can't go too crazy. This is great for adding that thickness to my brows and then I can just fill the rest in with a pen. And the reason I'm using this instead of the Patrick Tall wax is because um, I don't really have a whole lot of time today, and this this doesn't hold my brows as well as the wax does, obviously. But when you're looking for a daily brow, it is definitely totally appropriate. It does just the littlest bit for me. You can see how it just, the littlest difference, and yet it looks so good. I definitely still like the wax, but you know, if I'm in a rush or if I'm, you know, wanting it to be daytime appropriate, this is perfect. Just be careful not to get it on your skin, because then it can be like, it's like you got mascara on your skin, and it can be really annoying to take off, especially if you're the kind of person to do your foundation first like me, not your eyes and brows first. I'm gonna take my Glossier Brow Flick and I'm gonna fill in my brows with this. I definitely am super interested in trying the Anastasia and Benefit pens because those two companies are seen as like, they make like such famous brow products. And that Benefit pen with the prongs, you know, like every other prong product that we've all tried has always been such a failure, but everybody really seems to love the Benefit version. So like, I definitely want to try it. I could like fill my brows in with a pen even faster because it has the prongs. So we'll just call that done for the brows today. And since I'm doing wing liner without much dramatic eyeshadow, that should work well enough. I recently acquired this and I really would like to try it out. I've seen especially Julia Adams use this and it, she makes she said it blends really well. Somebody was selling this hardly used for like 15 or 16 dollars so this was a good chance for me to try this product. The color looks like this so it's a lot less warm than the Chanel bronzer which if I, do, if I use too much of it you can definitely see that it has a really strong warm undertone so I have really high hopes for this. I accidentally picked it up too much so I just clean off the excess and I'll go in. 
still a little bit much, but that's okay. That does blend out really well. Oh my gosh, look at that. It looks so good. And the color is really good too. I really like this a lot for sure. You definitely don't need much. You can see. So that's kind of the, gonna be the contour and the bronzing, which is appropriate because I think she actually calls this what tantor. So it's like, it does glow. I would have to agree. If you'd like to see a video of me comparing Chanel versus Tantor, let me know. I could do that. That'd be really easy. I'm going to use this Pony Effect Conceptual Eye Quad. It's in the shade Fair Affair, so as you can see, it is extremely subtle. I thought it'd be fun to also use her brushes. Her brush set, by the way, is like super legit. It's just like four or five brushes for like $25 on YesStyle, but like so worth it. Some of the best synthetic brushes I've ever used. I actually really want to get like multiple sets. I'm just taking this neutral brown color and I'm literally just buffing it over my entire eyelid. Just to add, just to kind of set my eye socket back in space. That's it. The only problem is my eyelids are so dry that even the softest of brushes, it feels like I'm being scratched. Oh, it might be a little bit much. I recently picked this up during a buy one get one sale from Jolzy, and I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. So this will be my first time using it. And this is easier done before mascara. See how it's really thin? So obviously it doesn't do anything and you can hardly see it. Oh, I made a mess. So it's messy, but since it's all gonna be drawn over later, I literally am just establishing what's closest to my lash line so that I can put my mascara on. Just using my favorite Shiseido eyelash curler. I'm gonna use this Etude House Lash Perm Curl Fix. I feel like it's like each mascara, it's like when you're creating a character, right? You only have a certain number of stat points you can spend, so you can't make your character perfect and everything. So each mascara gets different stat points for like volume and waterproof and curl and length and longevity. And so when you have straight lashes like me, you have to buy mascaras that spend all of their stat points on waterproof. So then they don't have any stat points left to spend on other areas. And so they're like waterproof and they hold my curl. But in all other regards, I don't get to have like extreme volume or extreme length. Because they just spent all their stat points on being waterproof. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how I feel sometimes. So if you're wearing thick black liner, the nice thing is if you get mascara on your lash line, it's not going to show up. My left lashes are just so tangled, like, my right lashes are all nice and straight, but like no amount of brushing and combing can make my left lashes behave. Like look at that, you can even just see the difference on camera. How messy versus my right eye, how neat and tidy. I'm going to be using this mascara for my lower lashes since I don't need waterproof on my lower lashes. I know I have like no lower lashes and I know that they're pretty pathetic, but I can at least make them show up a little bit. Just a little bit like that. So I've angled my wing. And now you can see I'm starting to block out the thickness since I have mono lids. I make a little triangle and now I have a shape I can fill in. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this liner. It's not even really all that black. And then once that's done, I can really start elongating the wing. And I sometimes will use eyeshadow to really get the pointy end the way that I want to. So here's what it looks like now. Not too bad. This is pretty okay for drawing like fake lower lashes though I will say. Yeah, at the very least, this liner does draw really nice lower lashes, like the fake lower lashes that I like to draw under my eyes. But as a wing, but as a wing liner eyeliner, I don't know, I don't know if I'd use this again. I just, I can see all the bald spots it's left behind, which is really frustrating. So I know this sounds excessive, but I'm gonna be using the black inside Mothership 1. It's the, it's just the best black. You see how that really just helped clean it up a lot? But I am going to run what is left on the brush on the inner corners. And it just kind of helps add a little more definition to the inside of my eyes. Okay, so this is the eyeliner complete, and as you can see, I have to draw it pretty thick, but by keeping the inner, inner half really thin and just concentrating all of that visibility on the outer half of my eye, I can actually make it look pretty manageable. So if I'm looking down or blinking, it really doesn't look all that excessive. I'm gonna go back into that eye quad from earlier and add a little bit of some inner corner highlight. Just a little bit like that. It kind of makes the look a lot less like, kind of like that sexy cat eye and it adds a little bit more of like a delightful finish to it. I'm going to use the Glossier Cloud Paint and Puff, so I have it on the back of my hand. As usual, I always apply it higher up. And I think that's an appropriate amount. I always end up putting too much on the back of my hand, but I'd rather it be that way than like all over my face. I'm not going to use any highlighter just because, you know, I don't need any, but I am going to set the blush that I just put down. And whenever I need to set my makeup, but my skin doesn't want to be dry and I don't want to look matte, I just use this. As you can see, I still have that glow on my cheeks. I do need to set my nose because my nose is going to be touching the mask, so I'm going to go ahead and use a mattifying powder and set my nose. I'll be using this to mattify my nose. And I guess, now that I think about it, I have to make sure I kind of take care of my chin area too. So. I'm not like going to be out for very long because it's already the afternoon and the appointment's not that long, but I'm gonna go ahead and use just a little bit of this and kind of concentrate it on the lower part of my face. And then, um, you know, I'm wearing a mask so the lip doesn't matter, but I am going to still put one on just because my lips are extremely chapped, so I'm just gonna go with a lip balmy kind of shade. I bought this during the birthday sale where everything was 30% off, but I don't really know why I picked this color. <laughs> Why did I do that? I guess on the website it didn't look as red. It's still really pretty, so I'll put it on. As you can probably tell, it is just that season 
where the lips are perpetually chapped. You can see how I just have all this dead skin. Oh, it's so gross. I'm gonna use this Glossier gloss on top just for a little bit more hydration. And it also looks a little bit better too. If you're like me and you really like matte lips, then winter is always kind of a tough time to be alive. So I do apologize for the lighting situation, but this is the final look. As you can see, there's my this is like the eyeliner that I default to if I don't really want to do anything crazy with my eyeshadow. The only downside is that if your eyes are a little bit wide apart, kind of like mine are, having it pulled so far out and concentrating the thickness in the outer half can make your eyes look even further apart. So that's why I always add a little bit of that darkness back to my inner corners to bring my eyes back together. So, but there you go. If you imagine it this way, this is what it looks like with the mask on. So the strong eyeliner actually looks really good with a mask on because they can't see your lips, they can only see your eyes. And this is, I'm not, I have to keep my hair up because the cats really like to play with, <laughs> play with hair. So I keep it up and I'm just wearing a simple hoodie that I can get cat hair on. But, so this is just what I'm going to be walking out looking like tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. I guess it's nice to see what I would actually wear if I was going out and meeting like complete strangers. But yeah, this is what I would do. And I like how it looks so and thank you guys so much and I'll, and I'll see you in the next video.